Hi everyone, this is Peter Schiff. This is Saturday, October 1st, 2011. Well, the third quarter ended Friday, and I'm sure a lot of uh, traders are very happy to see that quarter come to a close. It certainly is one of the worst uh, quarterly performances in history uh, for global stocks. Here in the U.S., it was the worst quarter since the first quarter of 2009, which was a horrific quarter, although the end of that quarter really marked the low uh, for U.S. stocks uh, and began a pretty big rally. But here in the U.S., the Dow Jones dropped 12%. That was the best performing of the U.S. stock market indexes. The Nasdaq was down 13%, S&P down 14%. Russell 2000, though, was down 22%. You know, there you have a lot of small cap stocks that are more leveraged to specifically the U.S. economy. And so they did worse, although the foreign stock markets in general, I think, did worse uh, than the U.S. stock markets, with some exceptions. Uh, the Japanese Nikkei was only down 11.5% on the quarter. I think the London FTSE down about 14%, kind of in line with the S&P. Remember, the, you know, the FTSE is, they're outside of the, the Eurozone. But most of the European markets that share the common currency really got clobbered. The German DAX was down about 20 what, 24%. I think the CAC current might have been about 25%. Uh, Italy, around the same amount. Um, and even outside the Eurozone, other Asian stock markets, the Hang Seng was down 23.5%. Uh, correct, I think the DAX was also down 25%. So, and in fact, in Europe in general, those major European markets, I think they had their worst quarters in nine years. Uh, so a lot of the uh, attention focused in on the European markets. It was another story, though, uh, when it comes to gold. You know, even though gold dropped by better than 2500 or excuse me, gold dropped by better than $250 uh, from its high during the quarter, the price of gold still managed to be up about 8% uh, during the third quarter. And if you look at the Dow uh, Jones to gold ratio, that ratio closed below 7 to 1. Uh, so on the quarter, uh, you saw the ratio decline by almost 20%, meaning the Dow lost almost 20% of its value measured in gold. Now, if you look at gold stocks, again, gold stocks managed to eke out a 1% gain on the quarter. If you look at the HUI, the HUI index, you know, again, uh, gold stocks are underperforming the metal, but at least they're outperforming stocks, which, you know, is certainly not the case uh, in 2008, 2009 timeframe. You know, the dollar, a uh, different story, the dollar was generally stronger against most currencies. The dollar index was up 6% on the quarter. But just looking at some of the currencies, you know, the euro was down 7.5% against the dollar. But look at some of the other currencies. The Canadian dollar was down 8%. Uh, the Australian dollar was down 8.5% uh, against the U.S. dollar. Now, nobody would really argue that the uh, European economy is in better shape than the Canadian economy or the Australian economy or even the U.S. economy for that matter. I think the fundamentals in Australia and Canada are better than they are in, in Europe and the United States. So why then uh, are those currencies falling uh, against the euro? And I think the real reason is just a reflexive flight to the perception of quality and safety, even if perception is at odds with reality. I think people are just buying the dollar uh, because it's perceived uh, to be a refuge in the storm. Unfortunately, I think it's really the eye of a storm, the eye of a hurricane. I think people that are seeking out refuge in the eye of the hurricane are going to be in for a rude awakening when the storm moves, and it is going to move. But if you look at other safe havens, the Japanese yen was actually up uh, against the U.S. dollar by about 5% on the quarter. So more people are seeking out safety in the yen than the dollar. Now, the Swiss franc is a different story. The Swiss franc fell about the exact same percentage as the euro, down about 7.5%. But the Swiss franc dropped by more than 21.5% against the dollar since mid-August when the Swiss National Bank basically decided to destroy its own currency. So if the Swiss had not intervened uh, to suppress the value of the Swiss franc, I think the Swiss franc, just like the yen, would have also gained against the dollar. Uh, but the Swiss government removed, at least temporarily, I don't think the Swiss is, is, is out for good. I think they're down, but they're, they're far from out. Uh, but for now, it was the Japanese yen 
and gold that were the safe havens of choice uh, and gold number one, although a lot of people uh, took refuge in the U.S. Treasury market. The bond market had a huge quarter. If you look at yields, the yield on the 30-year Treasury dropped from 4.4% when the quarter began all the way down to 2.9%. And on the 10-year, the yields went from 28 to 1 1.9 percent. I mean, imagine people buying these bonds, clipping coupons at the, such a low rate. There is no way anybody who is buying these treasuries is intending on holding them to maturity. Everybody's going to flip them. It's just a trade. It's a gigantic Ponzi scheme. All the talk about a bubble in the gold market, the bubble is in the treasury market. And when it bursts, look out. And that's only going to add fuel uh, to the bull market in gold. Other commodities, of course, did not fare as well as gold. Even silver uh, was down because silver, part precious metal, part industrial metal, silver was down 14.5% on the quarter. Oil did even worse. Oil dropped 22%. But you notice the drop in oil looks pretty much identical to the drop in a lot of the stock markets. And I think this is this global synchronization. You know, you have a lot of economists now or, or analysts trying to say, hey, this drop in the price of oil is bullish for stocks. Uh, it's not bullish for stocks. The only reason oil is dropping is because stocks are dropping. And when stocks start to go back up, oil is going to go back up even faster. So it isn't going to be any kind of a, a tax cut for the American people in a way that it's going to help uh, the stock market. Overall commodities, they all went down. The CRB index was down about 12% on the quarter. Now, I know when you look, listen to all the news coverage uh, about the U.S. stock market, I think a lot of it uh, is a scapegoat on Europe and Asia. I think the administration, certainly when they talk about uh, our economy, our stock market, they want to blame it on the problems in Europe uh, or, or Japan. That, it, our problems are homegrown. Yeah, there are problems abroad, but that's not why our economy is struggling. That's not why our markets are struggling. In fact, it's the reverse. If it wasn't for the concerns about Europe, we'd be in even worse shape right now. Imagine if all the safe haven flows weren't going into the dollar. Imagine if the dollar were sinking instead of rising. What if Treasury yields were rising instead of falling? Think about what would be happening to an already weakening U.S. economy. No, the real story of the fourth quarter is that when the quarter began, most of the strategists, most of the economists thought incorrectly the U.S. economy was recovering. Now they see it's relapsing right back in the recession. The economic data that we got this quarter, whether it's the economy in general, housing, jobs, it's all been horrific. And in fact, the Federal Reserve itself admitted that the economy was in worse shape than it thought, and it's thrown this Hail Mary a pass uh, um, operation twist. I mean, it's not going to get completed. In fact, it's going to be caught and run back for a touchdown in the other direction. Ultimately, this is a prelude to uh, QE3, which I believe is coming and which I believe will ultimately reverse uh, the corrections in stocks. Uh, commodities, precious metals, everything. I think everything is going to rise. Uh, the one thing that's not going to improve is the U.S. economy because stimulus is not going to work. Because remember, all the stimulus is designed to do is encourage more spending. But once the money is spent, we find ourselves in a deeper hole because we have nothing to show for the additional spending other than more debt. The truth is we spent our way into this economic crisis. We can't spend our way out temporarily. We can have a little more fun, a last hurrah, as we blow some more borrowed money. But the problem with stimulus is the more stimulus we have today, the more stimulus they're going to have to do tomorrow. Not that they actually have to do it, but more stimulus means additional stimulus is necessary because the stimulus makes it worse not better. And in fact, if you look at the numbers we just got on Friday, look at personal income, household income in August dropped, dropped for its first time in two years. And of course, I think if they had real inflation numbers there, uh, you would see a bigger decline in real terms. But even in nominal terms, household income dropped, yet the savings rate fell to four and a half percent. That's the lowest it's been since late 2009. So households are being forced to dip into their meager savings to try to sustain their existence right now. And of course, what we need is more savings on a household level, but we can't get it. We need savings on the government level. Of course, government deficits are out of control. They're about to get worse uh, if Congress passes Obama's quote unquote jobs plan. Again, it's not a jobs plan. 
It's a stimulus. It's simply designed to get Americans to spend more money, which as I said a minute ago, only makes the problems worse, not better. All, all of this is going to happen. Uh, and so basically the bottom line is, yes, we did have a rally in the dollar uh, in the last quarter. We had a rally in treasuries. I think people who are buying dollars and even more buying treasuries are making a huge mistake. They will one day regret it. They don't regret it now. I think they're smiling right now. They think they've done the right thing. They're living in a state of delusion. Yes, people who bought gold have done well. People who have money in foreign stocks have fared as poorly as people who had money in domestic stocks, maybe more so uh, depending on the stocks that you might own. But of course, you know, the foreign stock markets that went down more than the U.S. stock market this quarter all had much bigger rallies than the U.S. stock market uh, in the preceding years uh, following the 2008 collapse or the lows in December of 2008. So they went up more. It stands to reason that they're coming down more. But ultimately, when the world stops acting reflexively and really examines the fundamentals in the global economy, the problems in the U.S. right now, as bad as the problems are in Europe, the problems in the U.S. dwarf them. We have more immediate problems that are going to be more difficult to solve. And what's actually happening right now is Europe is being forced to deal with its problems because it really has no choice. America hasn't had to deal with its problems because we can keep on borrowing. As long as Treasury yields are at these ridiculously low levels, the U.S. government has carte blanche to keep on borrowing and delaying the day of reckoning. But the problem is the more money we borrow now to delay that day of reckoning, uh, the more disastrous it ultimately is uh, when we do have to confront it. So in the meantime, I don't think it makes sense to look at the short-term strength of the dollar and the relative weakness of foreign stocks to try to change our investment portfolios to try to get back into dollars thinking it's a port in the storm uh, when in fact it's not. You know, I think one of these days there are people, people out there who um, have millions of dollars in treasuries and one night they're going to go to sleep rich and they're going to wake up poor. And I think the risk is too great to try to finesse this thing, to try to time it short term, to try to go into the dollar, into treasuries or something like that, waiting for a better buying opportunity. I think the key is now is to get rid of your dollars, to accumulate metals, uh, to accumulate overseas stocks, uh, to buy uh, income streams in foreign currencies, and do not measure your wealth in terms of dollars because I think it is ultimately going to be an exercise in futility to try to measure assets in a currency that is in danger of collapse. Anyway, uh, that's it for this uh, video blog. Uh, make sure and watch again to tune in to my radio show at shiftradio.com for the daily play-by-play -play about what is going on in the markets and in the economy. Bye for now.